If you've ever been on the internet, you've probably seen the Audi Quattro versus BMW xDrive argument. When I went on to research the two systems, xDrive versus Quattro, I couldn't see why the Audi fanboys were so big on Quattro being better. To answer the question once and for all, I'm here to do it properly. We've got a BMW 3 Series xDrive, an Audi A4 Quattro, and just for fun, we're throwing in a Jaguar XE all-wheel drive system. Why are we doing it properly? Firstly, we're normalizing the tires, and this is the key point that all the other tests seem to forget, because tires make the biggest difference on snow and ice. Thanks to Nokian tires, who have kindly been bought wheels for both the BMW and the Audi, we have managed to match the wheel and tire size exactly in 205 60 16. Sadly, we couldn't find wheels for the Jag, but that's running a very similar 205 55 17. It's the same width and pretty much the same rolling radius. All three cars are running exactly the same Nokian Hakapalita winter tyre, which is a class leading tyre in the Nordic winter segment. The second reason this test should be better than the rest is where we are. We're in White Hell, which is Nokian's insane winter testing facility in Evelo inside the Arctic Circle. The third reason this test should be better than the rest is I don't care who wins. I'm a tyre tester, not a car tester. And fourthly, we've normalized the tires. Now I realize that's the first reason I gave, but it's such an important thing, it's worth saying twice. So enough with the theory and chat, let's go get testing. To ensure fairness, we've matched all three cars in weight and power as best we could. We'll be testing the all wheel drive systems in snow handling to see which is the fastest and most fun, and also real world scenarios covering ice traction, a snowy hill start, and the first test of the day, acceleration on snow. All three cars are lined up. We're in ABJ order, so I'm in the Audi. Audi invented Quattro, as the internet will let you know. So in theory, this should be the quickest car. So first run we're going to be doing with traction control on, all the systems are going to be on. We're going to be doing runs three times. Each car will get the same run in each lane, and we'll do driver swap to eliminate any bias there or any potential bias. So let's see what happens. Stick the car in gear. OK, handbrakes off, and in three, two, one, Go. The Audi gets away better than the BMW. Uh, the Jaguar is keeping up. The Jaguar is just falling behind. Well, the Audi wins that one. Okay, round two, and I'm now in the BMW, which didn't do so well last time. In fact, it was the slowest of the three cars. So let's see if my driving can help. I don't think it will. Three, two, one, go. Well, I've got the jump ever so slightly this time. The Audi's kept honest and it's coming back. Now it's got the grip. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So that's second to BMW, or it's the second run to BMW with the Audi very close behind and the Jag pretty decent as well. Let's do a final rotation with all the systems on and then move to systems off. Okay, so I'm now in the Jaguar the heaviest of the three cars and the loser in the first two runs. Um, I'm in the middle lane, my first time in the Jag, and something tells me, A, I don't know where the handbrake is, and B, this will probably be the loser again. So let's see, find out. Three, two, one, go. I've had the traction advantage. The BM is, oh, the Audi's got the grip now. That was so close between the BM and Audi again, but the Audi just takes it, and I am last in the Jag, so. That's two to the Audi and one to the Beamer. But importantly, most importantly, and being in this car for that run has allowed me to see what's going on. I'd say the BM and Audi get away pretty much exactly the same, but the Audi has a little bit more torque. So when the tires can actually get the power down to the road, the Audi's stretching its legs. So for the first, I don't know, 50 kilometers an hour, like the BM and Audi look like they're neck and neck. Okay, so I have sacrificed the Jaguar as the camera car because let's face it, we're all interested in Quattro versus xDrive. Uh, we've turned all the systems off this time and I've left the two other drivers in those cars so there's no bias with me getting the slight start advantage because I think there's a slight, there's a small amount of that. So we're going to run again probably two or three times with traction off and see what happens. Three, two, one, go. BMW's got the edge only very slight and now the Audi now the Audi's getting its power down it's going so there's they just crossed the line identical we're gonna do that one more time just for fun then we're gonna move to iced three two one go Audi and BM are absolutely neck and neck again and the Audi's hooking up the Audi just has this yeah 
So that's predominantly Audi winning overall. But I would say that's more down to the length of run we're doing and the power of the Audi or the extra torque of the Audi as it gets going. The actual 0 to 30 kph launch, there's almost nothing in it. Across the years, ICE has been known as the great leveller of men. Uh, well, no, probably not, but at least in traction and acceleration, it does because the tyres have that much less grip again than snow. So in theory, the four-wheel drive system and the driver or the vehicle electronics will be having to do so much more work to keep the traction moving around each corner of the car. So we're on some polished ice, all three cars are lined up again. Again, I'm in the centre in the Jag. Uh, I've got the BMW to the left of me this time and the Audi to the right. We're going to swap that round after this. And just because I haven't said this before, the guy that's currently in the Audi has the world record, the world speed record for ice. So he knows how to drive ice. And the guy in the BMW was a test driver, Snow was a nice test driver for many years. So I'm definitely being outclassed by driving talent. Don't think either of these guys are not up to scratch. Three, two, one, go. Okay, the Audi is, whoa, the Audi's, <laughs> the Audi's gone this time. Uh, I am thoroughly last and the BMW isn't that much further ahead. So that was really interesting. Okay, run to an ice. Let's see if it's any different. Three, two, one, go. Okay, this time the Jag's got the best launch. The BM and Audi are neck and neck. The BM's just, uh, now the BM's got the slight advantage. And the Audi's sitting behind the Jaguar. Okay, run three, BMW's back on the left, Audi's on the right. Three, two, one, go. No, uh, BMW, Audi, neck and neck, second phase, the Audi's got the traction now. And the BMW is doing much better than it did the first time. Three, two, one, go. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now, yep, the Audi's got the advantage in the left lane. This is what I mean when we're talking about Quattro versus Audi versus four-wheel drive systems. Consistency and surface is like the most important thing when testing. We've just proven that uh, the left-hand lane has a slight disadvantage even though the Audi's just had it. Okay, run five, driver aids off. This is going to come down to talent probably more than Quattro systems, but it'll be an interesting demonstration. Three, two, one. One, go. Oh, that's too much water spin. Uh, now the Jag drive rage kicked in. Uh, the Audi's lose, oh, it's horrible. The Audi's losing this one to the BMW and the Jag's neck and neck with the BM. Three, two, one, go. We're all just spinning. Oh, the Audi has the advantage. Oh, I'm just, uh, my speedo's reading 160. That's terrifying. Unfortunately, we can only run two cars next to each other safely or at all. So we've dropped the Jaguar and we're just running the Audi and BMW. And we're just going to accelerate up the hill and again, swap sides for interest of fairness. Three, two, one, go. Well, I don't know what the Quattro system is doing, but I have not got moving. Okay, so take two, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the Audi will do a little bit better this time because that was embarrassing for me. Okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, the BMW's got it again. Uh, he's still pulling away. That's, that's not so good for the Audi guys. Three, two, one, go. BMW's got a bit of slip and the Audi has the advantage this time. Only just again, but it just goes to prove that reaction and draw, uh, there's nothing between the two cars. It's crazy. Final run up the hill and let's see who has it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, the BMW is just slightly better off the line consistently. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you want to go uphill as quickly as possible in a four-wheel drive vehicle, 
Looks like this one's the BMW. Okay, so first car to go through snow handling is the Audi. Obviously Audi inventing Quattro and have the rally pedigree. This should set the benchmark, you'd think. Um, running currently with the systems on, but I've been doing probably five or so laps with the systems on. And what can I say? The Quattro system and the electronic systems do work quite well, but it does end up feeling quite front wheel drive. And then when you get a bit of your on, you can pull it around with the throttle to a point, but then the stabilization systems have a bit of a fit and uh, lock or break the front wheels, which brings the front sort of further into the slide. It's trying to straighten up the car, which is correct. But when you're sideways on a snow handling course, that's not really what you want because that's going to put you in a snowbank. I've done consistent lap times or I've been doing consistent lap times of about a 128.9, a 129 flat. Uh, 128.7 so that's probably the benchmark with the Audi with the systems on so with the systems off you do get more fun and like gone are the days of the oh, Audi's only understeer because you can get a bit of your on but it's not as much and you really have to work for it fundamentally it's still a bit of an understeery car and even more annoyingly when you do get it sideways even with all the systems off the um, the ESC, I guess, will start breaking wheels. I mean, this is a safe setup, and I mean, the traction's incredible, I, but overall, it's still a bit of a understeer balance, or perhaps more than I'd want from a Quattro system in this A4. Let's switch to the BMW and see if BMW's promise of uh, the ultimate driving machine or better driving dynamics holds true. The answer is well, yes and no. Um, with traction control on, it's score one to Audi mostly because the BMW's traction system, it feels like it's a generation before, and while the Audi system was quite annoying in that it was individually breaking wheels very quickly and just kind of like making the car work its own line, the BMW just doesn't give you power, and that's really frustrating. So you can just sit on the accelerator, on the accelerator, and that translated in lap time. So where the Audi was a consistent 129, this is a consistent 131. However, turn all the systems off and unlike the Audi they do turn off its score back to BMW for this very reason sideways one-handed no problem the 50 50 weight distribution really does make a difference and the fact the systems allow you just to boot it and go it just makes the car so much more fun to drive and with the systems off it's a smidgen faster than the Audi at about a 127.9 so we're talking tense in it but the BMW is definitely more fun right I am now in the Jaguar and you would be forgiven for thinking this chonky old bear moth might be the slowest of the three. And you know what? With the traction control on, it absolutely was. It was another second slower than the BMW with the traction control on, which was a second slower than the Audi with the traction control on. Its problem was primarily power. The traction control systems, the electronics, they just weren't letting you put any power down. However, turn the systems off and this a gentleman Jag Cruiser turns into a bit of a weapon. It's a it feels a little bit more nose heavy than the BMW, but it still turns really eagerly and is really, really happy going sideways. And that happiness going sideways and that confidence is allowing me to match the BMW and Audi's time. So go Jag. In fact, if anything, this car is the most predictable and potentially the most fun on snow with traction control off and I did not see that one coming. So how do we conclude today's fun? Well firstly again a huge thank you for the Nokian tires for providing the incredible facility, the cars and the tires. Of the three, who wins? I started the day saying I don't care who wins and I'm finishing the day saying I don't know who's won. Uh, the Audi was potentially a little bit more consistent when accelerating on snow and ice, but we put the Audi against the BMW on the hill and the BMW took it. Put them on track and the Audi seems to tie its Quattro systems in with the electronics a little bit better than the other two. It just allows you a little bit more leeway with the throttle to get the power on out the corners. Whereas the Jag and the BMW, they're nannying you a lot. So you just, you feel really frustrated. Turn the systems off and all of a sudden the Audi feels a bit disambiguous with itself. It's letting you get some slide on, but then the electronics are breaking the wheels around it and it's throwing the power backwards and forwards kind of at will. And it, it didn't make a huge amount of sense to me. And I wasn't 
comfortable driving of the three cars that's the only one that caught me out with the traction off and i bumped a few snowbanks the bmw did make good on its ultimate driving machine sort of byline in that the weight distribution the 50 50 balance of the car was really noticeable and it allowed you to turn in on the nose quite nicely pitch the car sideways and just hold it so with traction control off it was about the same speed as the audi maybe slightly better but it was more fun to drive now the jag the big old girl jag she was the surprise of the day not quite the quickest in any of the acceleration tests but on track again with the traction control off it was a joy to drive and it's a maybe a slightly bigger car than the other two and it's a jag and it's got that rep about it but really surprising and really good fun so much like the bmw perhaps it wasn't quite as sharp on the nose on bmw but it allowed you to bring the rear around and control it on the throttle with a lot more poise and precision than the audi did with its systems cutting in and out so um that concludes the day. Once again, a huge thank you to Nokian Tires. They did invent the winter tire and you can see that in their product. The Nokian Hacker Palita R2 has been near flawless and for a non-studded tire on ice, it was incredible. On the snow, there's probably no better tire you can get right now. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions, please ask and be sure to subscribe for plenty more videos like this in the future.